My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the breaking news that Dragon Man is actually a Denisovan. I will tell you all about how the researchers came to this conclusion, which means that we've had a Denisovan skull available for research for the past seven years. And I will tell you all about the Harbing Cranium, you know, the skull itself. So in 2022, I made a video on Dragon Man, and in it, I discussed the possibility of Dragon Man being a Denisovan. But back when I made that video, there was no evidence for this. But that evidence has now been found through ancient DNA research. I've also made videos on the Denisovans and how they were discovered through DNA, including a documentary piece I released last October. I highly recommend watching those videos for more in-depth information on the Denisovans and for a more in-depth look at the discovery of the Dragon Man skull. So first off, before I get into the breaking news, a little backstory on the discovery of the Harbin Cranium. Because this story starts nearly a hundred years ago when a Chinese worker came across a giant human-like skull during the construction of a bridge in the Heilongjiang province in China in 1933. The Heilongjiang province is often called the Longjiang. This literally means Dragon River, and this is where the name Dragon Man comes from. After the Chinese worker discovered the skull, he buried and hid it in a well, which was unbeknownst to the rest of the world. And it wasn't until he was on his deathbed in 2018 that he revealed the location to its family, who then donated it to be scientifically studied. The skull was one of the largest skulls ever discovered belonging to a species in the Homo genus, and it falls within the range of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens skulls actually even bigger than some of the Homo heidelbergensis skulls. And this was actually corroborated by anthropologist Chris Stringer, who was a member of the initial research team. So back when the skull had just been donated, the researchers used sophisticated geometrical analysis, including strontium isotopic ratios and X-ray fluorescence dating methods, among others. And they were able to date for certain that the skull has to be at least 146,000 years old, placing it in the Middle Pleistocene, which is known as one of the most dynamic eras of migrations of archaic humans. So the initial team that researched the skull estimate that it belonged to a man who was approximately 50 years of age when he died, who lived somewhere between 146,000 and 296,000 years ago. The cranial features are a mix of archaic and modern humans, with large eye sockets and thick brow ridges like we see in Neanderthals. But the face itself looks a lot more like the bigger version of Homo sapiens, with a brain size equal to that of us, modern humans. The cheekbones are flat and low with a shallow canine cavity. The face itself seems reduced and tucked under the brain case. So back in 2021, a team of five Chinese researchers stirred up some controversy when they released a paper suggesting that the Harbin Cranium belonged to a previously unknown species of human, and they thereby officially gave this new species the name of Homo longi, and nicknamed the species Dragon Man. So according to anthropologist Chris Stringer, the skull had a very interesting combination of features. The morphology clearly shows that it's a distinct lineage originating in East Asia. The morphology was not Neanderthal and not Homo sapiens. In fact, Stringer believed that the Harbin Cranium was most likely a Denisovan skull, the first one ever to be found if that was the case, and he had hoped DNA analysis will give us more answers. Although this has been very difficult on a 146,000 year old skull that has not been preserved in the perfect conditions. So as you can imagine, Stringer and others therefore weren't too pleased that the skull was published under a new official name, Homo longi. So after the paper on Homo longi had released, the initial team of researchers were contacted by paleogeneticist Zhao Mei Fu of the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, who asked if she could try to extract DNA from the skull. Why would she be the one to ask this, you may ask yourself. Well, Xiao Mei Fu was actually the first to investigate the DNA from a very tiny finger bone that was discovered in the Denisova cave in 2010, that revealed to the world that a previously unknown extinct human species had lived in that area, and they were given the name of the Denisovans. But now, 
In June of 2025, Chris Stringer was proven to be right after ancient DNA research revealed that the Harbin cranium is indeed a Denisovan. So how was Chao Mei Fu able to extract this ancient DNA? Well, she first attempted to retrieve ancient DNA from the bones and teeth of the Harbin cranium. Unfortunately, this was without success due to the fact that the at least 146,000-year-old skull was not preserved under the best circumstances in the past 100 years. So Chao Mei decided to try a different method, extracting proteins. Proteins are usually more hardy than DNA and will be preserved for a lot longer. And because proteins are what the genes in the DNA code for, they can also provide genetic clues about the DNA that generated these proteins. So information on 95 proteins were collected from the petrous bone, which is a dense part of the skull near the inner ear. And these ancient proteins matched the proteins in the bones of other Denisovans who had been found from Tibet to Taiwan. But as you can imagine, she still wanted to find DNA to be able to confirm if the skull belonged to a Denisovan. So she focused her attention on the dental plaque on the single remaining tooth of the Harbin cranium, which honestly was a long shot. While plaque is a very hardy material, usually researchers find bacterial DNA in it, and it's even rarer to find the DNA of the owner of the teeth. But against all odds, Chao Mei discovered a tiny amount of DNA in the plaque that was human, and this DNA looked sufficiently old enough to have belonged to the skull itself, and not belong to one of the people who have handled the skull since its discovery. She was then able to match the ancient DNA from the plaque to mitochondrial DNA from previously sequenced Denisovan genomes, confirming that Dragon Man is indeed a Denisovan. Although one of the initial researchers, paleoanthropologist Shi Jun Ni, thinks that it was his DNA fragments that were recovered, due to the fact that he handled the specimens so many times, and he is not convinced that the protein analysis is sufficiently specific, and he is also not of the belief that the degraded DNA is actually enough to identify the specimen of the Harbin cranium as belonging to the species of Denisovan. But we you and I, as onlookers and history enthusiasts, must remember that in the world of paleoanthropology, when it comes to major discoveries like these, there will always be researchers at odds with each other, due to their own personal interests and beliefs. Shi Jun Ni was a co-author on the initial paper from 2021 that presented a new species to the world, Homo longi. And therefore, it is understandable that he has his own personal bias when it comes to new information being presented about the same skull years later. Shi Jun Ni was also not affiliated with the two papers that were released in the journals of Cell and Science on June 18th, 2025, you know, yesterday. Chao Mei Fu, however, does acknowledge that a substantial portion, in fact nearly four-fifths, of the DNA that she had extracted was clearly the result of contamination, but that she used the established protocols to select only the DNA that is indeed ancient. And that is how she found out that the tiny amount of DNA that remains, as well as the proteins, confidently identifies the skull as Denisovan. It contains 27 gene variants, only found in the seven known Denisovan individuals, and therefore, none of these could arise from modern human contamination, she said. So two different methods gave the same result, which makes most paleoanthropologists much more confident that the Harbin cranium belonged to a Denisovan. But after this information revealed that the Harbin cranium belongs to a Denisovan, a new question arises. What should we name them? Since Denisovans have never been formally described as a species and never given an official species name, while Homo longi was formally described, should we now refer to Denisovans as Homo longi? Well, some anthropologists say yes, Homo longi should be the appropriate species name of this group of ancient humans, since the Harbin cranium is one of the most complete fossils found of a Denisovan so far. But other researchers don't think that it's useful to assign separate species names to hominins from this period. Paleogeneticist Svante Pabo says that it's not helpful to assign them different species names as they are closely related groups that have been shown to mix and have fertile offspring with each other and with our own direct ancestors. So he said that if a species name is needed, he would simply call them Homo sapiens. 
I personally would say give the Denisovans the official name of Homo Denisova, which would be a homage to the first researchers and have the species be named after the cave where the first fossils were discovered, which resulted in the discovery of this previously unknown species. But that's just me, you know? That's my thoughts. It's not important to this video or to anything else, but just wanted to put that in. And then there's the recently proposed Homo juluensis from last December, where the researchers from that study were of the belief that Denisovans were part of Homo juluensis, even though they did recognize Homo longi as a separate species. Therefore, I think it is safe to assume that they no longer believe that the Denisovans were part of the species of juluensis. So Denisovans or Homo longi, whatever the name eventually will be, we now know that the Harbin cranium belongs to a Denisovan individual. But there you have it, the breaking news that the Harbin cranium, the dragon man's skull, belonged to a Denisovan and that we finally officially have a confirmed Denisovan skull, which will eventually lead to us learning more about Denisovan morphology. So what do you think of this latest discovery? A Denisovan skull? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below, including the Denisovan documentary and the video I made in the past about Homo longi and the video I made on Homo juluensis. And you can also click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. Truly, it means the world to me. It's currently hot in the Netherlands. We do not have air conditioning. I feel like I'm sweating like a pig. It's fine. It's a really small office. And honestly, it feels like a greenhouse because it gets so hot and humid in here. So I'm gonna cool down and then edit this video real quick so it can go premiere tonight. And if you watch this, you're gonna watch this a couple hours after I filmed this. So I'll see you in a couple hours. Bye. I need ice cream or something. Ice cubes down my neck or so. I need to cool down. <laughs>